Hey, welcome. Today I'm going to talk you through how I painted this painting. I did paint it live, so if you so wish, you can go and see the live tutorial, which is in the link below here. I used the paper I use is a big piece of it's a big piece of this. Help to hold it up the right way. 350 gram watercolour paper. It's cold press. And it's really nice. Except that I had tea stains on it, a bit of old painting splatter and mess all around. But I didn't let that so I got two like quite a few tea cup stains on there but I didn't let that um sort of hold me back from using this piece of paper sometimes it's great just to paint on a piece of paper that's really mucky because you don't really care you just start painting and it just things happen so <laughs> you will see and then I do clean it up in photoshop and this is what I end up with As you can see, it looks a lot cleaner and better than the original, although I like the original one. The brushes I'm using for this are um, Face Squirrel brushes by Zen Art. I've got this big one that I started off with. I don't know what size it is because it's all rubbed off because I've used it so much, but it's really nice brush and it goes into a nice point. And then I use this one, which is a number 10. So this one must be an 18 or something. I don't take much notice of the um, numbers on the brushes because different makes are all different sizes, which doesn't help very much. Uh, the watercolours I'm using, they're mainly Winsor & Newton artist quality ones. Forgive my really messy um, palettes, but that's how I paint. Um, these are my greens here. I've got a mixture of Windsor and Newton. Oh, there are a few Daniel Smiths in here and some darker greens, which are the Van Gogh Dusk colours, which I really love. For the rose, I used um, some pink, which is bright opera pink from Mission Gold Colours. And I also mix it with a bit of cadmium red and a bit of orange as well. And they're Winsor & Newton ones. Um, to make the white white flowers, I use the Dirty Mix on my um, palette, which I love to use for painting shadows and dark and white flowers, believe it or not. Anyway, I'll talk you through the process and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's start off. This is my dirty paper and those yellowy blobs are going to be pine cones, believe it or not. <laughs> well, that's how I started. Now I'm starting to paint the white flowers. These are sort of like anemones. I sort of made everything up in my head sort of thing. So um, it's how I see things in my head. I don't know. I start off by mixing up a bluey, greyish, greenish really light mixture and I paint in the sort of shadows on the white flowers sort of how they are then I build the layers up slowly adding like darker and darker areas for more shadows so it's like painting back to front in a way and I seem to have perfected this technique to um, my advantage and I can paint really lovely white flowers now but you don't paint them white paint them dirty gray color it's good fun I just used a yellow ochre color to put the centers of the flowers in and now you've got more of a like a perspective of what the flowers are going to look like and where the central point is of them now I'm going to paint a really simple loose rose flower type thing <laughs> I say type thing because it's not exactly it's a rose from my head I'm not copying anything or anything so we see how it turns out I start off really pale and I'm also adding in I love orange and pink together so I've got this really lovely sort of orange and it's got a slight pearlescent to it and I've got no idea what paint it is but it's really lovely but the pink I'm using is bright opera by mission gold 
I thought also that it would look nice. I've got some blue splodges up there, so to cover them up, I used ultramarine blue and a bit of indigo, and I'm going to paint some anemone type flowers here that are blue. I'm using a wooden skewer just to skewer, skewer in, just to mark in the veins of the petals of the flowers. If you catch it whilst it's dark, where you scrape in the paint will fall into there and create a line. And I'm just using some Luna Black by Daniel Smith, one of my favourite colours, for the centre of the flower and blotting out just to make a little highlight in the middle. Now let's get some greenery onto this. I've got various watercolours here and different makes. I think this is a Van Gogh Dusk Green, which is really nice and dark and it goes granularly and really lovely. And I'm just putting in some leaf shapes and I'm just using like the stroke of the brush to create the shapes. bouquet is complete without a holly leaf or two. I've struggled painting holly, I've got no idea why. <laughs> I sort of do the outline but if you're going to take your time painting the holly leaf don't do the outline because it will show up and that's not good really. So, so just go for it, just paint it. Don't copy my holly, make your own up. <laughs> my holly's awful. Here I'm just going to add some diluted bleach. I love the way the bleach sort of adds runbacks and textures and bleaches out some colour. It just it's just something I I love and I use it a lot in my paintings. Don't worry, it doesn't mess up the paper, it doesn't mess up your brushes. As far I've been painting and using it for let me think over 20 years and it hasn't affected the the colour of the paint or the paper or my brushes ever so it's fine. Now I'm going to paint in some pine needles, pine like pine needle-y shape foliage. Here I just use the very tip of the brush and just do lines and then add in some darker colour just to add a little bit of interest to each one. So just drop drop in whilst it's wet and it, you'll get a really lovely effect. This is me juggling with my palettes. I always juggle with my palettes because I've got too much, too many colours. <laughs> Vary the greens you're using as well, so use light colours and dark colours and it adds a really lot of interest. If your greens are too green, if you know what I mean, really garishy green, try adding a bit of the pink or a red into it, just a tiny bit and it will knock it back and make it look more natural and give more of an olivey green colour. I'm using the very tip of my brush and I think I'm using Naples Yellow here just to add some detail to the centres of the white flowers. Again I'm doing the same here but using Lena Black and to 
create the centres of the anemones. Anemones are like poppies, they've got these lovely, really loads of stamens in the middle of the flowers and it's just lovely in the way that it holds the pollen. If you ha go and study some pictures, and it's just beautiful the way the centres of the flowers are. To make the composition work a little bit better, I'm adding another blue anemone flower here. And I'm trying to paint it behind the leaf that I did. Um, it's still wet, that leaf, and it's gonna run into the blue, but I don't worry about that. I, I just love the way watercolor runs into each other and creates washbacks and lovely things. I'm not doing a botanical painting here. I'm just catching, like, capturing the essence. I always say it, the essence of a flower, the feeling, the, it doesn't have to be, like botanically correct at all so don't worry about that and again I'm using a wooden skewer just to mark in the um, the veins of the petals now let's tackle these blobs that I call pine cones I, I found that pine cones are a bit scary to paint aren't they they're like so complicated but I found an easy way of doing it you just wash down a blobby light brown color I think I used I might have used quinacridone gold here and then I mix up some burnt umber or something like that a brown color and then I just do these little twiddly <laughs> twiddly I don't know sketchy twiddly triangly shapes and add a bit of solid color as well to make the shadows and it gives a really lovely effect of a pine cone. Because we're not doing a botanically correct painting here, you can tell what it is. It doesn't have to be, have to be perfect. It's a, quite a whimsy painting. Here I'm working on the second pine cone. I'm not going to make it as detailed as the other one because not every item in your painting needs to have the same amount of detail. It adds interest and lets the eye like follow around the painting. Here I'm going to work on my rose. I'm going to try and make it not look so much of a blob. Shh. <laughs> to do this, I'm just adding some darker pinks and reds into the middle of it, just to add a bit of depth. Yeah, I'm using my dirty grey colour to add another white flower underneath everything here. Again, I'm just building up layers with the 
dark sort of grey mix that I've got on my palette. Let's add some more holly. <laughs> I'm outlining, I have to outline, otherwise my brain doesn't get around the shape of it. I don't, I don't know why I have a problem with, with painting holly. And now I'm just lifting out a bit of colour just to add some um, light to the, the leaf, because hollies are quite shiny, aren't they? So I was trying to get that effect, and then I blobbed in a bit of darker colour just to add some shadow. Here I'm adding a few little stems and I'm going to put berries on the ends of these. More holly leaves because I need the practice and I'm not worrying that it's bled into the white flower because I love love that about watercolour, how things bleed into each other. It's just, I don't know, it's nice, it's yummy. Holly, holly everywhere. Um, I think I've sort of perfected my holly here. So um, yeah, it looks better. It looks okay. I'm, I'm happy with my holly in this painting actually. Mm. Now let's cover up this tea stain here. I'm going to paint a nice pink rose, just a blob. I, I just like, as how I start off painting flowers, just blobs, just think of them as blobs of colour and um, it tends to work. I don't, I don't overthink things too much. Here's me with my bleach again because I just love it and then I'm adding some really bright orange in the middle just to contrast that pink, pink and orange. It's just gorgeous together. happy with that top pine cone it ended up into a bit of a blodge splodge blodge <laughs> and um, so I blotted out some of it some of the color and added some more to it and then I've just put some more greenery behind it just to cover it up a bit I think <laughs> Whenever I paint a bouquet of flowers like this, I love to add like a 
what would you call it, background foliage really. And I mix up like a really pale bluey grey or bluey colours and that, that sort of adds depth to to the bouquet you're painting. Um, shad it's like a shadow colour so it adds a bit of depth. I just like paint really loose leaves around the place where I think it works in the composition. Now what's unusual for me, I picked up a really thin rigger brush here and I've just added some really dark green and I think I was trying to make the pine coney leaves look a bit more pine coney. Are they leaves or not pine coney? Pine leaves, you know the ones. <laughs> pine needles, yeah. A needles leaves. I think there's a special name for them, isn't there, or something like that. I must go and look that up. Now I'm working on the centre of the blue flowers a bit. I love to use like ink pen and I'm just using a, I think it's a uni ball, roller ball pen and I'm just drawing in the stamens of the middles of the flowers. I do this when I paint poppies as well. Now I'm going to work in the centres of the white flowers. I have a brown felt tip here. Nothing special about it, it's just a common felt tip pen and I'm just adding some some of the uh, stamens and the little blobs on the end. I, they, they've got a special name as well. I don't know what they're called. I should, I should know. I've painted them thousands and thousands of times. <laughs> I forget. And then with the paintbrush, I'm just adding a little bit of shadow to the middles of the white flowers. Now it's berry time. I'm using cadmium red for this and mixing a little bit of azillion crimson in it. And I'm going to mix it all together. I've got another red colour here and I'm not quite sure what that colour is because I let all the colours mix on my palette. But it's mainly cadmium red and azillion crimson. And I'm going to paint some berries. I'm just going to do round blobs. Just think of them as round blobs. Don't make them all the same size because that's not, it just, they don't look very real and we want some interest so just blob them on and berries make Christmas don't they? And I'm just finishing off putting berries here and there. Remember they have highlights on them. I, I do come in at the end, and but it's not on camera where I added a bit of highlight to the berries. So keep adding them in to, around the composition just to make it go pop. And I think I'm finished. The next stage in this video, I'm going to show you how I cleaned it up in Photoshop. I'm not going to talk through it. I'm going to speed you through it because it will make this video far too long. 
but if you would like a detailed instruction of how I scan my painting, clean it up, remove the background and then prepare it for either pattern design, please comment below and I will sort out a video for you. Thank you.